Welcome to the Nicholas 11x12 technology. As promised, my overclocking video of the Intel i7-6700K Skylake processor with the MSI Z178 Gaming M5 motherboard I've also reviewed. The Gaming M5 at the time of this video comes in at a price of around 180 to 195 US dollars. If you want to know more about that motherboard, go ahead and watch my main review of it. A huge thank you to MSI for making these reviews possible. Alright, so as you may know, I've already done such an overclocking video with the Z178 Gaming M7 not too long ago, and I ended up with quite interesting and surprising results. Well, it didn't take me long to realize I partly messed up. You know that magic trick I was talking about? Well, it backfired. I was showing you my stock voltage of the i7-6700K, and it was pretty high. However, I could do impressive overclocks with much less voltage than the CPU was running at stock. Well, the reason for that was enhanced turbo was enabled in the BIOS, which makes all CPU cores run at the turbo boost clock speed. I had disabled that feature, but at the time I tested the M7, the BIOS hasn't matured yet, as with all BIOSes on motherboards. So that feature was buggy on my board, but after fiddling around a bit, I managed to actually disable that feature to run my CPU at the actual stock speeds. The next BIOS update it fixed the bug anyways, but I don't just wanna blame it all on the bias. It was my fault too, and I admit it. I was tired and simply did not pay enough attention, I should have known. This means I pretty much messed up my Intel i7-6700K review, as well as the gaming M7 overclocking test. By that I mean the benchmarking results. Luckily the CPU core voltages showing these overclocks are still correct, which still gives us a good idea on what's achievable with the gaming M7. So I'm so sorry for messing this up. Won't happen again, at least I'll try my best. With that said, let's move on now. I'll test three different overclocks. 4.4, 4.5, as well as 4.6 GHz. At stock, the 6700K is running at, let's say, 1.224 volts at max, measured in CPU-Z. All I'm going to do in the BIOS is change the CPU multiplier ratio whatever and the CPU core voltage. This way, most of you can replicate these results. First, let's do 4.4 GHz. We're stable at 1.312 volts. Alright, 4.5 GHz. Stable at 1.328 volts. Nice. Now let's do 4.6 GHz. We are running at 1.368 volt stable. Not bad actually. However, with the M7 I've managed to achieve the same overclocks with a lower voltage number. For 4.4 GHz instead of 1.312 volts on this M5, I could do it with just 1.304 volts. At 4.5 GHz, 1.328 volts on this board and 1.320 volts with the M7. Finally, for 4.6 GHz, I need 1.368 volts on this M5 and just 1.344 volts on the M7. That's quite different, so it's definitely noticeable. At higher overclocks starting at 4.6 GHz with the 6700K, you really get to feel the power behind the M7 when it comes to overclocking compared to the M5. The lesson we learn here today is that a motherboard with more phases indeed does better when pushing hardware such as the CPU to its healthy limit. But let's take a look at how well the i7-6700K performs like when overclocking clocked.
The Intel i7-6700K is a real beast, that's what all these results tell us. It has great overclocking potential and doesn't even run that hot considering the high clock speeds. However, it's not worth overclocking the i7-6700K when all you pretty much do is game. Hardly any difference in games. But if you edit lots of videos and do productivity stuff in general, you definitely could benefit from an overclock. The temperatures and power consumption increase of course, but it's fine and it totally justifies the performance boost in rendering for example. Not in gaming though. So the combination of the i7-6700K and the MSI Z178 Gaming M5 motherboard is good for overclocking. It's fairly easy to achieve. Although the M7 undeniably does an even better job at overclocking. But that's what we got to expect anyways. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and visit my website to see videos there earlier than on YouTube.